and welcome to the Stan Simpson Show, a program about Connecticut people and compelling issues. Make it a point to drop in every week. Four years ago, Mike Harrington weighed over 400 pounds. He was obese, unhealthy, and very unhappy. He finally had enough and set off on a journey to healthy living. Eventually, he lost 200 pounds. Today, Harrington weighs 220. He is committed to a healthy lifestyle that includes a consistent meal plan and exercise. He is here today to talk about his journey from fat to fit. Mike Harrington, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good. I saw the old picture that when you came into the studio, I didn't recognize it. <laughs> was. So what a tremendous journey over a 12-month period. Absolutely. Right, in 2014. When, you're, when did you realize that weight was a problem for you? I think I always kind of knew. Uh, but I think the thing that really triggered me was the loss of my father due to his poor health habits. He died of colon and lung cancer, and it scared me to death. 2010, right? In 2010, very good. So why that scare you? What about that death kind of woke you up? I was in the room when he passed away, and I, I really feel that I saw regret in his eyes that he couldn't change his own health. What kind of habits? Was there any obesity in the family? Yes. There was. Where on the long, long well, I don't want to reveal everyone, okay, but, 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 but there is the obesity in the family. Okay. Yeah, there definitely is. Okay. But, you know, it's, it was more about poor health habits more than anything. So that woke you up. So what happens there? How much did you weigh in 2010? Your dad passes. What did you weigh approximately? I was well over 400 pounds. Over 400 pounds. I don't know exactly. Right. So what happens there? I made a promise to myself. I said that I wanted to learn something from his poor health habits. I wasn't going to let his death be in vain. So when you look at habits... What kind of habits do we talk about? Because uh, we're going to get into the whole Absolutely. issue of emotional, right. physical, sort of uh, unhealthy relations with food. What habits were the most compelling? It's really what I've discovered through my journey is what you eat, what kind of physical activity that you get, sleep, stress management, all of those things. I had to really completely retool those things. I realized that. It wasn't just about just losing the weight. What was the one thing you found that was surprising to you about you and food, about your relationship with food? Well, and this hasn't changed. I, I'm a stress eater, and I even from time to time binge eat. And I had to learn to create sort of techniques for myself. So if we, if we would say stress eater, meaning that when you have stress in your life, you eat. Absolutely. Right? Some people smoke a cigarette, some people walk, exercise. Great point. You would eat. That's right. Okay. You know, what's more difficult about something like that is the fact that it's always around you. If I smoked cigarettes or if I drank alcohol, I can not have those things in the house. But, that was, but stress was a trigger for you for food. Absolutely. And what kind of food would you eat when you're stressed out? Anything. You know, probably mostly you know, carbohydrate type right. things. And that's where the binge eating also came in. That once yeah. you stretch, start stress eating, then you're binge eating, and right. then you're doing that consistently. Exactly. Right? So at the end of the day, as you pull the layers back, your issue is more about stress than with food. That could be a, a good stress. way to, right, exactly. Am, am, am I wrong to say that? No, you're not, because that, that was something I had to learn to replace those behaviors, which is why I do some of the things like hiking and some other activities that distract me from going out and just eating all the time. So you did this self-assessment, you're 400 plus pounds, right. and you realize there are a lot of things going on emotionally, right. physically, so where do you start? That's, it took me a few years to figure it out, obviously, because I said that I, started in 2014, but between that time period, 2010, when my father died, and then I did a few times attempts to try to get there, what I realized was it wasn't going to just be something that I could just do like a diet and lose the weight. It had to be a sustainable type of complete life change. I had to commit to it. So give me one first step. I had to track everything that I ate. You had a journal. So you know, it's interesting. Initially, when I, um, at one point, I used to keep a written journal. Now, today, we have apps to do this. Technology. <laughs> right. right. And so I, I used a, a fitness and uh, food tracking app. Now, why is that so important? You hear a lot of people say, keep a journal. Right. And I'm guessing it holds your account. Why is that so powerful? That's, that's exactly right. And, you know, and another thing is it made me aware of what I was eating. I think when I was that big, I was just putting food into my mouth. Uh, when you keep track of it, you learn things about nutrition. You learn things like NyQuil has 90 calories. Oh, really? But I bet you also can time, I'm assuming you put in what time you're eating, what you're eating, and possibly see maybe a trend on when you sort of binge. Did you find that? Or did, you, did you look at your times and say, okay, around 3 o'clock I end up having 
Uh, nighttime is a, is a big nighttime one. A big problem. Nighttime's been a big. A lot problem. of folks emphasize that they eat late night and they can have a, a lot of food late. Middle of night for me. Right. Wake middle up. of the night. Really, wake up in the middle of the night. Middle of the night. So I want to do one thing too to show people what we're talking about. When you're 400 pounds, these is this is what you used to be like. This is uh, maybe you can stand up and show people how. You know, this is what you were. These are size 55 pants, and I think at some point we'll show a picture of me wearing them. Yeah, and we have some pictures here. Right. We have some pictures here where you're right. bigger, so I'm sure we will show some of those. But there's a right. So, and we have a also a belt. What we can do is just give people an idea what that's like. Yeah, size 60 belt. Let's stretch one to the, to the other. <laughs> we'll probably go across All the right, room. So, that was your belt. That was my and, belt. And you said that was at tight at some times for you. Yeah. So let's get back now. So you start charting this journal, right? right? And what do you find? How does that be, begin to become a elixir for you? Well, the first several months, I didn't really see much of a change in my physical appearance, probably the first three, four months. But it was teaching me to stay on a routine. And I think that was probably more important than the weight loss, was establishing a routine of eating at certain times, tracking what I was eating, and getting some physical activity. Okay, so let's go back to tracks with the food. What kind of things were you seeing? Because that journal obviously was very powerful. So what things were you seeing that were clear red flags? And what did you try to replace those things with? Things like sugary foods. I really cut back on that. Like, like what? Cookies? Give me an idea. Cookies, sugar, and Can't, coffee. Right. You know, things like that that I, I really needed to cut back. So eventually I did things like weaned myself from drinking coffee from with lots of cream and maybe six sugars. Right to maybe a couple less sugars, and then just slowly over time to drinking it black. All right, but all due respect, you don't get to be 400 pounds just on coffee and yeah, tea, absolutely. right? Absolutely. So what else, were you, what else did you see on there? Give me it's an idea, a good what, example. When, when you binge at night, what kind of things were it's, you doing? It was doing? really volume more than anything. Give, me, give folks some so, example here. Ice cream. Potato chips, Doritos, give us an idea. My, my thing maybe is ice cream, maybe it, it's uh, things like you know the, 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 the breads, pastas, those types of things, lots of those. So do you have any count when, when you're going through this sort of self, this introspection, looking what you're eating, replacing it, right. are you getting counseling, someone to help you with this, saying, Mike, you know what, why don't you try this, or is it more or less you're figuring it out on, on your own? I was but, figuring it out on my own. I do have some background in it. I grew up in a, in a family where, you know, I did have some exposure to understanding nutrition a little mm -hmm. bit. It's just, you know, doing it yourself right. is, is a whole other thing. Uh, I did at times... Uh, I had joined weight loss groups, so I had learned some of the techniques. And were they helpful? They were, but you know, to be honest with you, the group itself didn't have their you know the best habits themselves. So I, right. although I lost, I lost interest as well because it wasn't keeping my my uh, interest interest in it. Yeah. So when you have the issue of being overweight, about thirty seconds, and we'll carry a little bit of time over. The final question for this segment: When you're big like that, right? There's the physical weight right. and then the emotional weight. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself emotionally that you were able to change? Well, here's the thing that's interesting. I, I was stressed out and I was anxious and I was self-hating, not because of the weight itself. The weight was a symptom of those things that I felt about myself, probably from the past with childhood trauma. And because of that, I didn't take care of myself. Okay, so there was childhood trauma. At the root of the stress was some issues, childhood trauma. Absolutely. That you had to reconcile. Yes. All right, we're going to hold that thought right there, come back and talk about some of that trauma as best we can, and then the transformation of Mike right. Harrington, who lost 200 pounds a few years back, and he is not able to keep it off. We'll show you how he did that. We'll also show you the reaction from his mother when she first saw the results of her son's weight loss program. You don't want to miss it. Remember, catch our show on your own time online at fox61.com slash Stan. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter too. Don't go away. Mm -hmm.